Is right now the time to be buying Bitcoin? That's exactly what we're going to be discussing right now and everything that you need to know that is going on up here in my noggin to decide whether or not you should be buying Bitcoin today. With that said, we've had some incredible news come out regarding the Bitcoin ETF and a lot of excitement around that. So the market is currently up. So I'm sure a lot of you guys are considering jumping in and we've got to take some minutes, some moments in time to decide whether or not it's the right time to be doing it. So I'm going to be giving you my thoughts and opinions around this. But obviously, you got to remember that uh, nothing at all in my videos is ever financial advice because look, I'm just a guy sitting in his room talking about crypto. Yes, I did very well in the cryptocurrency markets back in 2022, basically now, but I did absolutely terribly in the cryptocurrency markets in 2017 to 2018. In fact, I lost all of my money. So using that knowledge, I actually applied that to the next bull run and made a significant amount of money, took you guys on that journey. And here today, we still sit in what I would consider a bear market. A lot of people would argue that right now, but I think we're still there. So we just do and learn from the lessons that we have and we go on to make other mistakes. With that said, let's jump into today's video. So first of all, if we jump over to the Bitcoin chart here, we can see first of all, the RSI is still not in an overbought territory, which means on this weekly chart, we could be heading higher. You can see the RSI gets all the way up to around 100. The RSI can get pretty high before we do start to see pullbacks. This is one form of trading that I've talked about here on the channel that can generate a serious amount of income. You can see we can follow the RSI. So if you guys do want to learn more about that, there is a link right around here. As we know, the the price of Bitcoin has gone flying recently. We have continued the uptrend that we have been watching here on the channel. Today we sit at 34,800. I don't really care what price I'm buying exactly Bitcoin at as long as I'm buying in a market situation where I believe we have a lot of upward momentum to go from. Now I believe that Bitcoin is going to very easily pass 69k, it's old all-time high, and most likely in my opinion 100k is definitely on the cards. Now we have a lot of news the Bitcoin ETF and a lot of people are comparing that to gold ETFs. And if Bitcoin was to ever reach the market cap of gold, we would be over $400,000 for Bitcoin. So the way I personally see it, now this isn't financial advice or anything for you to take as gospel because I don't know what's going to happen next. But the way I see it, if I'm buying Bitcoin every week or every month or as often as I possibly can, and my price is in and around even the price it is today, what do I care if I got it at 30,000 or 34,000 or if I got it at 15,000 or 20,000 if I believe that Bitcoin's price is going to 100,000 if not 400,000? For me personally, I've been able to average this price because I've been continually buying when the market sees fear. If we head over here to the Crypto Greed and Fear Index, one indication of the way I buy. And this really only applies if you've been buying over the last period, because we have been in fear and neutral for a long time, right? The last couple of months, the, oh, basically the last whole year, we've been in neutral and fear. So for me personally, because of this greed and fear index, I'm not starting my position in Bitcoin in greed, okay? So remember, if you are considering starting your position today, there is quite a high likelihood because of the greed and fear index that we head back into fear and neutral in the next coming days days, weeks, or months. So there's a chance that the price may go down from here. So if you are prepared to dollar cost average, if the price goes down, I think it could be an idea to get in. But of course, you have to be able to sustain this drop. So I wouldn't personally be dumping all of my money in at this point. I would be dollar cost averaging from here, if not just simply waiting for the greed and fear index to head back into neutral or fear. Given the market situation, the S&P 500, the DXY, the overall macro, it tells us that we're not in a great standing point for the economy. And guys, if you are looking for a place to buy and sell Bitcoin, crypto on the spot market, you can do so over on one of my channel partners, Bybit. And one of the keys to the opportunity right now that they're giving is that you can get a free Bitcoin USDT perpetual position airdropped into your account. So you can choose to go long on Bitcoin or short, depending on where you think the market's going to go. And you can get that for totally free. And recently on the channel, we've had some absolutely insane gains with Bitcoin USDT. You can see that I got a 600% gain on my position just from saying patient in this market. So you guys can make the best of this over on Bybit. On top of that, if you did want to trade the spot markets, you can do so over here, Bitcoin USDT and, and hundreds of other altcoins that you guys can trade. They also have a launch pad and a ton of other opportunities for you guys to use. Again, just by following the links in my description. And there are a number of other links down there if you do want to choose from the exchanges that I personally use. With that said, let's discuss some other pros of buying Bitcoin 
right now. So of course we have scarcity and a limited supply. Bitcoin's capped supply is at 21 million coins. This demonstrates a lot of scarcity and not something that we've actually seen in this world really before. When you think about gold, for example, you can literally go out and find a whole mountain of gold like at the bottom of the sea, which would then dilute the supply of gold, thus making it less valuable. Now, you can't do that with Bitcoin. There is only 21 million coins. You can also carry those coins in your pocket. A billion dollars worth of Bitcoin fits in your pocket. These are the things that I think are good. Maybe there's other things that you guys think are good. But with 93% of the total supply already issued, the remaining issuance over the next 14 years represents a mere 6% of the total supply. The scarcity is expected to drive demand as institutional investors and individual investors seek to secure a share of that limited supply. Now, as the halving comes, which is coming in April 2024, half the amount of Bitcoin will be going onto the market. Four years later, another half. This is going to continue to get more scarce over the next 14 years, which I think is going to bring more value and adoption to Bitcoin. Maybe it doesn't, but I think it will. I think more and more people are going to realize that Bitcoin is an absolutely incredible asset to hold in a diverse portfolio that can provide you with hedges against things like inflation. Just look at the inflation since COVID. Look at the price and value of the US dollar. Now look at the price and value of Bitcoin and you tell me whether or not it's been a good hedge since COVID. Because I tell you right now, it's been a very good hedge for me. With that said, we also have institutional and individual adoption where we see the rise of institutional adoption of Bitcoin is reducing the available supply, potentially driving up the price in the long term. Notable institutions and billionaires have publicly announced their Bitcoin holdings, showcasing a trend of growing adoption. We are currently right now in the midst of this run that we're having where Bitcoin have just hit $35,000, seen that Bitcoin's ETFs may be approved soon. We've seen news from BlackRock. We've seen news from ARK just today. And I think it's more and more likely that this is going to happen very soon. This is why people are excited today because they realize that if there is approved Bitcoin ETF on the market, there's going to be a flood of money coming into that market. Just like we can see here with the first gold ETF approved, where we actually had a price rally of close to 400% over the years that came afterwards. Now, it took many years for gold to move that much, but I do expect Bitcoin to actually move significantly faster. Now, I have reservations of if this run is going to continue because I believe that it's more likely that we see some more blood before we see the happy days of a bull market. But of course, we have to wait to see what exactly happens there. For me personally, dollar cost averaging has been the best possible idea no matter what happens. Yes, we have good news. That doesn't mean that I'm dumping money in the market. I'm buying whether or not there's there's terrible news or absolutely brilliant news. Now, with that said, of course, you can hear that I'm very bullish on Bitcoin. I think that starting a position today could be a good idea as long as you were willing to dollar cost average if the price goes down. Now let's look at the cons of buying Bitcoin in general and today. So first of all, we have various challenges that exist for individuals and institutions looking to buy Bitcoin due to the regulatory hurdles, exchange issues, and associated fees. These challenges can deter new investors and, and potentially affect Bitcoin's market growth. We are continually seeing regulatory scrutiny that may pose as a challenge for Bitcoin's acceptance and its price. We see this in the form of exchanges being attacked by the SEC altcoins being attacked by the SEC, and so on, so forth. All of these scare the market and create volatility. If you're in this market, you need to expect volatility because I do believe it's going to pay off very well if you have patience. But if you cannot sustain the volatility, you're going to get eaten up and you're most likely going to end up with probably 99% of investors that lose money. So don't be those guys. Do your research. Believe in the assets that you're personally investing into. And in my opinion, the best way to get exposure to those assets will be dollar cost averaging no matter what happens. Moving on from that, we have environmental concerns where critics point at the high energy consumption of associated with Bitcoin's mining as a significant downside. I personally think it's totally nonsense. And I'm pretty sure that things like dryers, yes, clothes dryers, use more energy. 
but that's for another argument. We also do have competition from altcoins, the rise of alternative cryptocurrencies with improved scalability, lower fees, and unique features could overshadow Bitcoin. Ethereum is an example of that, which may see way more upside than Bitcoin. For me personally, I buy my vast majority of crypto in the form of Bitcoin because I believe it will be one of the scarcest, most valuable assets on the planet. I could be completely wrong there, but I believe that if I can carry millions of dollars in my pocket with no one ever knowing it even existed in my possession, I think that's a great asset to have. Maybe there is an altcoin. Some would argue that XRP could be that altcoin that people would prefer to have over Bitcoin. So there is no way to know if Bitcoin will make it. It's just my personal opinion. With that said, the expedition through Bitcoin's landscape reveals a mix of promising prospects and potential pitfalls. Its decentralized nature, strong community support and increasing adoption are encouraging. However, regulatory challenges, market volatility and environmental concerns necessitate a well-informed and a cautious approach and thorough research is always going to be the number one thing you guys can do in this market with that said i hope i provide you with some value and insight into the way my brain works and with that said i'll see you guys in the next one peace